You're watching the Channel 2 News Morning Edition. Wilson Arraignment, the man charged in connection with the disappearance and death of Ashley Johnson Barr facing federal charges. We have the latest update. It was April 18th of last year. Um, you know, I was like, I can't do this anymore. Road to recovery, one man shares his story of going from hopeless to hopeful as September is National Recovery Month. And hello, McFly, <laughs> the DeLorean has landed in Anchorage. In fact, it is right outside our studio right now, but do we have enough road to get up to 88? We'll find out. The morning edition starts now. Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for waking up with us here on a Wednesday. Roads, Kari, where we're going, we don't need roads. roads. We've got the DeLorean <laughs> right outside our studio. I'm freaking out. Yeah. We're freaking out. We're all like Howie. our inner, like, back this to is, the future. I mean, this, is you, this is oh, your I love, thing. I love this yeah. movie. Howie. I saw this movie in the theater uh, when it came out. Yeah, back you were like there. 35. <laughs> right, 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 right. I like that one, um, huh? <laughs> lived in Rancho Cucamonga where you see the mountains and the filming and the scene. That's where they filmed at the yeah. mall over there yeah. by my house. But if we are using the roads, it's, the roads are in good shape today yeah. for, uh, for our... To head going, back to the future. To head back to the future, the, the past, wherever yeah. they happen to be going. And if you're going <laughs> to school this morning, a few hours later, about 9 o'clock in the morning, or to work, 48 degrees under mostly cloudy skies, and then your return trip about 3 o'clock or so, heading home, 59 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. So looking ahead, so mostly cloudy. It's going to be dark when we're out there with the DeLorean, but um, so we don't have to worry about the sunlight, uh, you know, causing any eye problems, but because we'll still be dark. But either way, we're looking at clouds today as we get close to 60 degrees, winding down our final few days of summer. So as we take a peek at our atmosphere, you think we're getting lots of rain, but high pressure nudging in out of the southwest that kind of suppresses the atmosphere. It's going to give that push down instead of that lift. That lift, the rain likes that lift. It goes up and then it comes back down. We're not going to get that. So maybe a drizzle or a sprinkle or two, but going to stay dry today with a good deal of cloud cover. So right now, 51 degrees in terms of winds, not bad right now. So I think it's not going to slow down the car. But if we want to go back to the future, looking around Telkeetna, 45 degrees, Yakutat at 35, down in Kodiak, 49, Seward right now, 51 degrees with winds out of the north at 10 miles per hour. Over in the bowl by the station, here we are, 51 degrees for our car, 51 over by the airport, 47 hillside, and Eagle River is at 48 degrees right now. So today we're going to see a high temperature of 61 degrees and our mostly cloudy skies. Uh, Thursday right back up to 61, then Friday a little cooler, but we get to see more peaks of sunshine for our last day of summer. We'll talk more about summer's end. And falls bit. rolling well, in on Saturday. I it's warm September. enough, though, for the flux capacitor to function. So I would think At so. And least. all that plutonium At and magnesium least. and all that stuff, they combine in there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, Howie. Well, in news this morning, first appearance, a man connected to the suspected murder of 10-year-old Ashley Johnson Barr facing a federal judge here in Anchorage. 41-year-old Peter Wilson had an initial appearance in federal court yesterday afternoon. Wilson, who is related to the family, is accused of lying to federal agents and could be indicted on possibly more charges later this week. A lone supporter, his sister, called to him as he was escorted out of the courtroom at the end of the hearing, her telling him, quote, Mom said to tell you she loves you. Before the hearing, Wilson read some paperwork as he waited for his attorney. Onlookers, most appearing to be from law enforcement, filled the room. Wilson's sister sat in the back, fighting tears. And an investigative narrative states that it appears that Ashley was murdered, but doesn't say how or why. That's part of the investigation, and it is still ongoing. And Wilson's connection to all of this is Ashley's cell phone. She was a very responsible uh, daughter of ours and uh, sister. Um, she did have a cell phone um, that night, that day, that evening. Ashley's parents had been calling the phone all night, and according to investigators, it turned up in the coat pocket of Wilson, found ringing and ringing by a friend that Wilson had been staying with. And then there's this. Wilson had two hours that were unaccounted for earlier in the evening around the time that Ashley went missing. He'd headed out on a four-wheeler to pick up two children, but returned to the home with no children. So during that same window of time, Ashley's phone was geolocated southeast of the park she'd been playing at. A search of the path identified by geolocation led to the discovery of Ashley's body Friday afternoon. Wilson now accused of lying to investigators. They say he denied using a four-wheeler the day Ashley went missing. He claimed not to know her, that he'd found the phone late that same night, and that he didn't know the phone was Ashley's. The community of Kotzebue now responding. I think it's going to mean a lot to the family and to the community just to see 
you know, the amount of support, even if it's in visual, within, you know, beautiful flowers. You know, as a child, you know, everyone has their favorite something. And so, you know, having purple flowers is gonna mean a lot to everyone and her family especially. And from flowers to food, the community is getting ready for the 10-year-old's funeral. There are dozens of people that want to make donations to ensure that her burial is beautiful and meaningful to the family. And if you're interested in donating, we have all that information available on our website. That's ktuu.com. In other news this morning, moving to the next phase, Anchorage's plan to address homelessness is set to enter a new era. So later this morning, the Anchorage Homeless Coalition will meet with assembly members to discuss Anchored Home. Here's details from Channel 2's Victoria Taylor. Homeless, by definition meaning without a home or permanent place of residence. For many in the state's largest city, this has become what that looks like, but it's not quite that simple. The majority of the people that we interact with, um, that the outreach team interacts with and the police describe are from Anchorage and hit a problem here and became homeless. Um, but there are some people who came in hoping to find um, additional resources or, or came to Anchorage looking for something. Hello, APD! Collecting input from residents, homeless Alaskans, and organizations, the Anchorage Coalition to End Homelessness has created the Anchored Home Plan. The point of Anchored Home is to make homelessness in Anchorage rare, brief, and one time. Already the Muni has made some significant changes. We've now placed social services in the police department. We have mental health resources coming out to people in the community. Do you need help with housing? We have and a social worker here. Anchored Home will focus on housing and support systems. A, a growing recognition, I believe, that just eliminating camps without really having resources and places for people to go to housing isn't going to solve the problem. And that's where I would argue that there has to be resource investment. Improving public health and safety and getting to functional zero. That's a term coined to mean the demand for shelter is less than the supply. There is also the story of, of uh, many, many people who have a one-time challenge and with a bit of assistance move on with their lives and thrive and contribute to the community. So keep in mind that this is a draft right now. Part of the Anchored Home Plan focuses on community input. And last night, the coalition held a public forum at the Lusack Library for people to weigh in. There's still opportunities, though, for you to add your thoughts. For a link, you can look for this story at ktuu.com. Well, in other news this morning, stand for Alaska or stand for salmon. The two phrases have been drowning the airwaves through Alaska for a bit now. And this week, Alaskan families, businesses, and scientists all piling into an auditorium for a public hearing on ballot measure one. Yeah, the forum for the much talked about measure was hosted by Lieutenant Governor Byron Malott, who last year actually rejected the application for the initiative as unconstitutional. Here's Channel 2's Derek Minemeyer. Opening statements from Alaska prominent ballot Alaska sponsorship Alaska and opposition. still enjoys wild, healthy, thriving, sustainable salmon fisheries. Stephanie Quinn Davidson is a fishery scientist who worked in salmon fisheries on the Yukon River. We are at a critical moment in the history of our state. Our 60-year-old ineffective law that is meant to protect salmon habitat will not protect us from the worst effects of mining and overdevelopment on salmon. Aaron Shutt, president and CEO of Doyen Unlimited, represented the measure's opposition. Ballot measure one would eliminate our science-based fish habitat protections and replace them with red tape and unclear, untested regulations. Testimony against ballot measure one outweighed that in support of the measure at this event. We need to strongly oppose it. In the first hour, only two were for, 28 against. But Stanford Salmon Director Ryan Scriver thinks the imbalance is largely from being financially outgunned. Well, our, po our opponents are primarily deep-pocketed foreign mining and oil companies, and um, they've been able to pay people to show up at these types of events. Stand for Alaska Vote No on One campaign manager Katie Kaposi says Alaskans land on both sides regardless of funding. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. I think you have a variety of people who, who feel very passionate about this issue, and so whether they're being, you know, whether they're on the company payroll or not, uh, they have shown up to let their voices be heard. And the next public hearing is scheduled for this Friday. That's taking place in Sitka. But as for next week, there will also be additional hearings across the state. Well, now to national headlines this morning. An alleged incident from decades ago might be affecting Judge Brett Kavanaugh's future. The woman who accuses Kavanaugh of assaulting her wants the FBI to investigate before she testifies. Here's CNN's John Lawrence. 
Judge Brett Kavanaugh's vote for the Supreme Court was originally scheduled for Thursday. The hearing should be as a result of the investigation. It shouldn't be a substitute for it. I'm John Lawrence reporting. And just yesterday, all 10 Democratic members on the Senate Judiciary Committee sent a letter calling for a federal investigation before the hearing. Well, ushering in a new era just today, South Korean President Moon Jae-in and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un signed a peace agreement, North Korea agreeing to take more steps toward denuclearization. The agreements include a promise by Kim to permanently dismantle the North's main nuclear complex if the United States takes corresponding measures. Also, the country's plan to jointly bid for the 2032 Summer Olympics. Well, still ahead, McFly's marvelous ride right outside our studio. When we come back, we're going to go live with Channel 2's Victoria Taylor as she gets a tour of the time traveling ride. A good Wednesday morning, everyone. Hope your day's off to a great start. Ariane, correction, great Wednesday morning, because I don't know if you can hear Hugh oh, Lewis yeah. in the news out in our uh, <laughs> parking lot at the moment, yep. Howie, but we have a very special visitor today. One of my favorite movies of all time, and if he's going to try to hit 88 and go back to the future or back to the past, wherever he's going, we have ideal conditions out there. Not a lot of wind. Uh, Kind of cloudy, but it, it's still dark at this hour, so the sunlight reflection is not going to really affect him either way. So in the bearing, high pressure is starting to move up out of the southwest. That's going to help with the storms over in the Bering Strait, moving across the state, headed through the interior, headed towards Alaska, because this high pressure is going to kind of nudge it and prevent it from moving down to the south. And then this high pressure is going to move off in a couple of days, and it's going to open up the doors for storms out of the Bering to start moving in and changing up our fall-like weather in to fall like weather. So this morning we have another frost advisory until nine o'clock in the morning down from uh, Yakutat to parts of the Panhandle and then Skelec Glacier, uh, the dam, the glacier is gonna be released today, but it should not impact Skelec Lake or the Kenai River uh, due to already low levels of the rivers and the lake. So a uh, small impact of that with the release of that glacier. So looking ahead, a lot of clouds today, minimal sunshine, but we get up back up into the upper 50s to the lower 60s for highs. So very summer-like with summer have, uh, closing out our, few, our last few final days. Anchorage at 52 right now, Prudhoe Bay at 28 degrees down in Ketchikan. We're at 48. Cold Bay is at 44. Later on, look at the panhandle. Lots of sunshine with temperatures in the 60s. Kodiak up to 60 under partly sunny skies. McGrath, it ends at 8.08. Not going to get to see too much sunshine today. A lot of cloud cover, but still above average for our final few days of summer. We're staying warm. Yeah. Uh, hello, Makari. Think, Ariane. Yeah. Think. All right, we're a little excited for We're getting for into this. this. There's a reason for, for, for the madness. All right, grab your Nike pumps and your hoverboards. We are going back to the future on this Wednesday morning. Channel 2's Victoria <laughs> Taylor. She is live outside our studio in Midtown with a look inside one of the most recognizable cars to come out of the less last century. Hello, Victoria. Hey, Kari. Yeah, you hear that engine roaring? Do you hear the <laughs> Huey Lewis playing in the background? That's right. This is not your granny's Camry, okay, that we're talking about. If your grandpa is Marty McFly or even Doc, this is your ride. We're talking about the DeLorean, all right? Not just a DeLorean, a DeLorean time machine, all right? This morning, we're actually joined by uh, Terry and Oliver Holler. Oliver over here in the driver's seat. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Oliver, you and your wife really took this on as a passion project. How did that come about? Well, we're big fans of the movie, Back to the Future, and we thought one day, wouldn't it be just the most fun thing in the world to drive a DeLorean time machine? So we built one. And how's that gone so far? Well, it's gone uh, pretty good. We've, we've visited 50 states and uh, 28 countries so far in, in the time machine. And in part of that, you've actually been able to raise some money for Parkinson's Research? For the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research. About the same time we were building the car, uh, they were building the foundation. And uh, we're our goal is a million dollars. So we'll see how well uh, Anchorage can, can help us with that goal. Sure. How can people help? Come to CinchiCon this weekend. You can sit in the driver's seat, have a photo taken for a donation. We even have a hoverboard. Look at this. <laughs> of you course you do. You can have a photo taken hovering Perfect. just a few inches above the ground. <laughs> Perfect. So Oliver, we're going to be checking back a little bit later in the morning edition, but I want to kind of tease our viewers a little bit. What is the coolest feature on the DeLorean? Oh, well, you know what makes time travel possible, Victoria, is the flux capacitor. Oh, that's of course. Yeah, it's fluxing, so uh, come yeah. see it. 
So we're gonna be checking back in with you guys a little bit. Kari and Ariane, I got some uh, oogling over here to do with the time machine. <laughs> I'm oh, Googling. Completely, we're completely geeked that out right is now. so cool. So you can actually see the DeLorean driving through Anchorage this weekend while the haulers are in town for SenshiCon. All right, still ahead, rare video from Canada, a fire NATO with a mind of its own. Plus, also from Canada, we may have found evidence that scrap from the Ice Age movies may have been real. Stick with us. Good Wednesday morning, Alaska. Hope it's off to a great start. Nice day to get outside, mm -hmm. enjoy some of this weather before fall yep. officially arrives. That's Saturday, Howie. Did it, you know? Is, it, is that coming up? It is coming it up. Is. I got confused because <laughs> I was going back to the future, so yeah. it, was, it was reverse, and then the southern hemisphere, it's almost spring. So, yeah, I, I appreciate you clearing that up for me. So here is your back to the future forecast right here for this morning. If you're getting out the door driving in a DeLorean, 49 degrees. <laughs> under a cloudy sky, so looking ahead, lots of clouds today, but we're going to warm up once again into the upper 50s or the lower 60s. That is above average, so it is not fall just quite yet as summer continues to hold on. So as summer does hold on, yes, it's going to be a short stay, maybe a jacket early on, but we're going to warm up nicely later on in the afternoon and go back, to the, back in time in a DeLorean. All right, thank you so much, Howie. So the Baltimore Orioles making history last night, not for their playing on the field or anything like that, but rather for what they were wearing. Whose broad stripes and bright stars. Special jerseys for a very special cause as they became the first American professional sports team to use braille lettering on their uniforms mm. during a game against the Blue Jays. So the special Orioles alternates were part of a promotion done in conjunction with the National Federation for the Blind, which happens to be headquartered in Baltimore. The first 15,000 fans also received a braille alphabet card on their way into the park. Very neat. All right, so a video posted to Instagram, it shows an unreal scene of a fire tornado pulling the hose of a Canadian wildfire crew it high into the air. Yeah, check Look at this that. out. So three firefighters, they're seen struggling to try to just control that hose as oh, it's sucked gosh. toward the flames while a spinning vortex of fire oh, appears feet away. Firefighter Mary, she shot and posted the video of the fire tornado which formed southwest of British Columbia and was almost 200 feet high. Firefighters are so impressive. Whoa. They run towards it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. All right. Well, another news, a caribou calf and wolf pup were dug up from the permafrost by gold miners near Dawson City, Yukon. So the two animal specimens, scientists say, are 50,000 years old, remarkably well-preserved with fur, skin, muscle, tissue still intact. Ice Age bones and fossils are often found in the Yukon, but mummified carcasses are said to be extremely hmm. rare. Very interesting. All right, still ahead on the morning edition, a horrible crime out of Iowa leaving a family not only in mourning, but looking for answers. Well, good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, September 19th. I am just grinning ear to ear. It's like Christmas morning, you yeah, know? Yeah, SenshiCon for the uh -huh. weekend. Of course, the DeLorean right outside our studios, and we're all geeking out over here because Channel 2's Victoria Taylor's out there. We'll go ahead with her in a little guys, bit. I might just leave you guys, honestly. Me too. Can you either one of you do the weather? <laughs> can you do, can you do the yeah, news? Yeah, it can't be that hard, right? Pro probably not. <laughs> I can't. Well, <laughs> no, you two probably easily could do the weather before I could be up there. No question about it. But, yeah, it's a great day. I'm a huge fan of Back to the Future. Uh, looking ahead, if you're going to drive that car, we are looking at some clouds today, but not a lot of wind. And we are looking at some warm temperatures. So really a good day to get out, take a stroll in the DeLorean, hit 88 and shoot back in a time uh, into the past or the future or wherever you're going. With fall starting on Saturday, I'm not sure if you're going to like what you're going to see, but we'll talk about that in just a little bit. All right, in national news this morning, President Trump visiting North Carolina today to see the impacts of Hur Hurricane Florence. He is scheduled to visit the Marine Corps Air Station, Cherry Point in eastern North Carolina. He's going to get an update on the storm damage areas there. Many parts of North Carolina flooded and still suffering from devastating effects from Hurricane Florence, which made landfall on the coast last week. Well, speaking of Hurricane Florence, Michael Jordan, MJ, announcing that he and the Hornets are donating $2 million to help hurricane victims. So the North Carolina native is contributing $1 million to both the American Red Cross as well as the Foundation for the Carolinas Hurricane Florence Response Fund. 
Walmart going the extra mile to help areas impacted. Trucks rolling to areas of the Carolinas devastated by Hurricane Florence, loaded with thousands of cases of water wow. and supplies. So far, Walmart has shipped nearly 3 million cases of water to parts of the Carolinas as that region starts the recovery process. Additionally, Walmart and Sam's Club are matching customer donations for hurricane relief. So for each dollar donated, Walmart will donate $2 up to $5 million through September. 21st. Customers can either donate in store or online. Well, another news this morning, a murder on a golf course is sending shockwaves across the state of Iowa. A young champion golfer who was about to be honored as the Iowa State Female Athlete of the Year this weekend found dead after going out on the course alone. And an apparent stranger is now charged with her death. Here's NBC's Blake McCoy. A gruesome discovery on this Ames, Iowa golf course. College student and star athlete Salia Barquin. Her brother says the family is together, working through deep pain, struggling to understand why this happened. And this is now the second college student to be brutally and randomly murdered in Iowa in just as many months as Molly Tibbetts was also found dead about an hour away from that golf course. Well, in other news, one of Elizabeth Smart's kidnappers is being released from prison today. Wanda Barzi aided in kidnapping then-teenager Elizabeth Smart in 2002 and helped hold her captive for nine months. The Utah Board of Pardons announced Barzi will be freed from prison today after 15 years in custody because Utah authorities miscalculated the amount of time that she should serve. Smart has spoken out about how she believes Barzi is still a danger to the public and should not be released. Well, still ahead here with us on the morning edition, dream drinks are all the rage now when it comes to getting a better night's sleep. But we're going to tell you why, what doctors think about sipping your way to bed. Stick with us. Good Wednesday morning. I know I've been saying a lot, but a great day to get in your DeLorean, head back to the future, good conditions on the roads. Right now we're at 52 degrees. You wouldn't think so. I'm sending you back to my anchors. <laughs> Nice one, Howie. All right, so <laughs> doctors say one of the top concerns that they hear from patients is having trouble sleeping. So dream drinks, they're becoming very popular, and one product has actually made its way to Texas. So while the Internet is raving about this new sleep aid, doctors want you to know the risks before you pop it open. So Haley Hernandez reports in today's To Your Health. Sip your way to sleep and warns not to operate machinery or drink alcohol at the same time. And, of course, experts say you should always consult with your physician before you take any type of sleeping aid. Well, still ahead, this season of America's Got Talent has been one to remember. And tonight we're going to learn who's going to take home the grand prize of a million dollars. Plus, there's a new hot restaurant in L.A. And, in fact, it may be described better as a flaming hot. Uh -huh. We'll tell you why. Well, new this morning, a story of overcoming addiction. From 14 up until, you know, when I started uh, staying sober. It was about 16 years. Born and raised in Fairbanks, Arthur Stevens picked up his first drink at the age of 14, and from there, his road to sobriety hasn't been an easy one. He says as the drinking progressed, it also became his escape and how he dealt with depression. With the way the drinking was going, I lost my house. I lost my job. Once I take that last drink, that's where the rubber meets the road. You know, that's where I really got to put in that work to heal from that 16 years. So that's where organizations like Recover Alaska come into play. September is National Recovery Month, and Stevens hopes in sharing a story of sobriety is that it can help someone else see the light at the end of the tunnel. If this has the potential to reach at least one person and potentially change that one person's life, hey, you know, let's go for it. You keep pushing through that wall, those walls, you know, you're eventually going to make it. So there are a few more events scheduled for the rest of the month, both here in Anchorage and in Juneau. Next Tuesday, in fact, September 25th, Stevens will share more in-depth his story of sobriety at the Anchorage Community Theater. It is free, open to the public. It starts at 7 p.m. and will be stories of hope, addiction, and recovery here in Alaska. Of course, for more information, you can always visit recoveralaska.org. All right, time now for a check of weather on this Wednesday. Good morning. Howie Fall is on the way. Yep. Fall's on the way, but you, you definitely wouldn't have thought so over the last couple of weeks. And I know our stretch of sunshine ended, but you know what? Staying above average and mostly dry. But then Friday, yes, a little bit cooler with a high of 58, but 
looking at partly sunny skies for our last day of summer. All right, thanks, Howie. Well, grab your Nike pumps and hoverboards because where we're going, we don't need roads. But we will need a parking lot because we need a place to actually oh. park the DeLorean. Okay. Yes, we have a very special celebrity guest here with us this morning. And Channel 2's Victoria Taylor currently live outside our studio. What an honor with a look inside one of the most recognizable cars to come out of the last century. Hello. Yeah, hey, good morning, guys. So, you know, we couldn't have the DeLorean come visit us and not take a ride right now. I kind of feel like I need a red vest since I'm riding shotgun, like just to pay tribute to <laughs> Michael J. Fox. But we actually wanted to show you what it's like to be inside of it. So here we go, Oliver. Are you ready? Should we I'm close the door? Ready. Let's go to the future, All right, Victoria. Oliver, here we go. Oh, I'm not as strong as you. you not much. It. Not as much practice. Here we go. Oh, all right, All right, guys, we're Seat belted up, yes. Let's do this. All right, so we're ready. So guys, we actually are headed to 1988, February 8th, in fact. I wanted to go back 30 years. Uh, you know, thought that was, hey, that was a special day right there. Yours truly, my birthday. Happy so, birthday. Yeah, thanks, Oliver. Pick the day. Why not? Head back. <laughs> yeah, cake and ice cream next time, or this time, rather. So here we are, we're just cruising, and I told Oliver earlier, I was like, this is one of those cars, you kind of can't help but feel cool when you're in it. Oliver, feel to drive this thing, you know, now that you, you put all this time in it, and you guys have gone across country. Well, yeah, all over the world, we've, we've, uh, tra we've driven to all 50 states uh, and uh, 28 countries in the time machine, spreading awareness and... and uh Um, it's not, you know, it wasn't a rebuild. Got the DeLorean and made it a time machine. What are some of these things that you use to outfit it with? Oh, you know, we did kind of like the, uh, the original folks did it for the movie. We just looked for scraps, scrap yards, uh, bits and pieces. There, there, there's a sink drain and uh, there's even a, a battery terminal cleaner. That's the part that Marty bumps his elbow on to turn on <laughs> the time circuits. Just whatever we could find that, that looked like the parts in the movie. Perfect, Oliver. And so I think this up around our parking lot, but the they can't exactly do what I'm doing, ride in it with you. Oh, but they can climb into the driver's <laughs> seat and have some great photos. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Kari, Ariane, back to you guys. I'm going to keep hanging out here. So clearly our microphones, you know, they have trouble traveling yeah, to 1988, but know. you could catch some bits and pieces of that, and you can catch the DeLorean at CinchiCon. Yeah, this so. weekend. Mm -hmm. Good stuff there. We're like, we want to be out there and I go. Know. All right, well, it is decision time on America's Got Talent. The season 13 winner will be announced tonight. So the show's 10 finalists turned in their final performances last night. Here's NBC's Mark Barger. I think some of you tonight are going to have life-changing moments. AGT's 10 finalists each tried to make that prediction come true last night. Viewers will make that million-dollar decision. Mark Barker, NBC News. What were your, your eyes just got all big there. What were you looking at? I don't know. I don't just know. All the accent. Oh, that, the hearts, the, the or abs, or was it abs? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the season finale of America's Got Talent that airs tonight. It's followed by the series premiere of NBC's new comedy, I feel bad. Hmm. Hmm. All right, let's talk Cheetos. I will, okay. Flaming hot ones. Want to know why? Because a pop up restaurant in Hollywood, it's serving flaming hot Cheetos in ways you have never imagined. This is crazy. I know. The flaming hot spot features fusion foods crafted by famed chef Roy Choi. The spicy sweet menu includes the hot Cheetos burrito, Cheetos Sweetos hotcakes, and flaming hot Chipotle ranch wings. The restaurant says it is completely booked, I mean naturally, but it is currently offering a wait list. And if you can't make it to LA, you can have the recipes and ingredients delivered to your door through Amazon Fresh. It's like the only chip that you can lick your lips. Yeah, you get the pruny fingers. All right, let's go talk weather here. Howie, good morning. What you got? Good morning. I don't, I don't know about weather today because we're talking Cheetos. We're talking Back to the Future. So it's just one of my favorite shows today. 52 degrees right now. Winds are calm. So if you are cruising along in your car or a DeLorean, then we look to have rain Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. But we stay above average with temperatures in the upper 50s. So what do you guys think about, about this? Where'd you guys go? What happened? Oh, Howie, I know exactly where they are. One thing we like to do on the morning edition is have fun. We want to set you up for your day. You know these girls couldn't let me have all the fun. 
this is where Kari and Arion are. Of course, as we've been mentioning throughout the day, you can check out the DeLorean Time Machine in person this weekend at Sinchi Khan. That's at the Denina Convention Center, Civic Center, uh, Convention Center, excuse me, Denina downtown. That'll be the 21st through the 23rd. All right, we got a lot more to check out with this bad boy. Hope you're ready for your day. That does it for us. Why we'll don't I get to go back tomorrow. to the future?